is Daisy, and today I'm going to talk to you about how to leverage sensors and open source software to improve your kitchen skills, and how I combine two of my very different interests into a personal project, which is still a work in progress. And I did this primarily as a way for me to learn more about both things, so I will go through the steps that I took to create it and what I learned along the way. Um, so I love to bake. A while ago, I became interested in the art of making one's own sourdough bread. And for those of you who aren't familiar, sourdough is a type of bread that, due to its fermentation process, is a much healthier alternative to store-bought bread. Uh, the naturally occurring acids and long fermentation help to break down the proteins and gluten, making it more digestible and easy for the body to absorb. And uh, these are breads that I made myself. And I like how each loaf comes out, turns out quite differently each time, like almost like a piece of art, because the process is about method, timing, and personal touch. And it also tastes as really good. <laughs> um, and making your own sourdough starters is really simple. So to begin, take flour of almost any grain, mix it with water, uh, cover it with a breathable lid, and then put it somewhere warm and away from light. And for the first few days, try to observe it and see if any air pockets form. Those are signs that a bacteria is forming. And then after 12 to 24 hours, or if you see it get watery, you want to get rid of half of the mixture, then feed it with more flour and water, and then you repeat the process until you have a very lively, living and breathing fermented culture. And then when it becomes very uh, bubbly and active, you can take a small portion of it to make your bread. It will act as a, a leavening agent and make your bread rise without the need for commercial yeast. And the healthier your starter is, the more effective it will be in making your bread rise. Uh, but working with natural starters can be difficult because they are very sensitive to variations in temperature and humidity. Since it is a living and breathing organism, there is a lot of uh, uncertainty and variations in its growth. It's much like taking care of a pet or a plant. You need to continually nurture and take care of it so that it doesn't die. And I've made many attempts and had to throw out a few batches because it simply contracted too much mold. So parameters such as temperature and humidity need to be closely observed since they can alter the sourdough's behavior. And the key to making good sourdough is to try to manage and control the fermentation process. And this is often achieved through trial and error or weeks and months of experience. Um, and at, at, I attended a Go meetup in Berlin a while ago, and that's where I learned about a project called Prometheus. This is an open source systems monitoring tool written in Go that has become very popular. And I like the community, and I became interested in the project, and I wanted to learn more about it. Uh, its ecosystem comprises of a server, a time series database, query language, alert manager, client libraries, and special exporters. The server collects time series metrics from instrument to targets, stores them, and makes them queryable with its query language, and then you can use this data for dashboards and alerting. The server was designed to be non-clustered, to be kept simple and reliable, so it can monitor large-scale distributed systems, but it's also very efficient on single-node systems, and you can run on things like Raspberry Pis. And uh, I don't really work in DevOps, and so that I thought a great hands-on way for me to learn more about Prometheus components and capabilities on a small scale would be to set it up to monitor the humidity and temperature of my sourdough cultures. Uh, what kind of insights could I gain from the metrics generated, and what if there's a better way to understand what happens during the sourdough fermentation process? In the next half of this talk, I will go through the process that I took to set up this project, how it works, and what I learned along the way. So here's a quick rundown of uh, what I did. I got my hands on two Raspberry Pis, and I ordered some Bosch BME280 sensors. This is a digital sensor that can measure temperature, humidity, and atmospheric pressure. They can be bought for maybe 3 or $4 online. And then I connected them together according to a wiring diagram I found online. And then on the Raspberry Pi, I installed the Raspbian Lite operating system, and I enabled the I2C interface. I2C is a protocol that allows one device to exchange data with one or more connected device so that my sensor can exchange data with my Pi. And then I installed some I2C tools and go. The next step is to have a way to export metrics from the sensor in the Prometheus format. So this means we need an exporter. This is a program that lets you translate uh, metrics from other systems into a format that Prometheus can understand. 
Uh, to find such exporters for systems that you want to export metrics from, you can uh, search the mailing list on GitHub, or you can always make your own. And you can write an exporter in any language, but I will give a very brief overview of how to write one in Go. I chose Go because it's a language that's uh, good for systems programming, and I feel like it has a fairly low learning curve. So first you import the Prometheus client library of the language that you're using, and then you want to create a collector type and make the Prometheus client aware of your collector. I'm also using the GoBot framework here so that I could use the I2C driver and get data from the sensor. And in Go, your collectors must implement the Prometheus collector interface. So the collectors must be objects with the describe and collect methods. So the, the describe method returns a description of the metrics that it will produce. In the collect method, you fetch all the data you need from the application instance, and then you format it in the way that you need, and then you send the metrics back to the client library. Uh, the Prometheus client library offers four core metric types, counters, gauges, histograms, and summaries, but I only need to use the gauge for this exporter since I only need a value that can represent a value, something, a value that can either go up or down. And these metrics will then be returned by the scrape of the metrics endpoint. Then you will want to set up an HTTP handler and expose the standard metrics endpoint and start listening for HTTP connections. When I run the exporter and go to the metrics endpoint in the browser, I see something like this. The exposition is in a line-by-line -line, text based format. With the exporter running, Prometheus can now come over the network and scrape the metrics being exported from the exporter that's running on the Raspberry Pi. And now that I have my Raspberry Pi and sensors configured, I can put everything into place. I decided to separate my cultures into a control group and experiment group, and I put one batch near the heater. I also tried to experiment with humidity by putting some water near the heater. Now we need to configure and start the Prometheus server. A YAML file is used to specify what endpoints to scrape and how frequently to scrape it. So in this case, uh, scrape it every 60 seconds. Once we start the Prometheus server, we can visit its endpoint in the browser and see if everything is running correctly. And now we can create dashboards based on this scraped data and I've opted to use Grafana here. Uh, PromQL is the Prometheus query language. It can help you answer a lot of ad hoc questions about your system in a large scale production environment, but for this simple use case where I'm using one dimensional gauges, I can just display the values as they are. Um, but I could also take a look at the deriv function to maybe track its rate of change in the future. Um, so I I may, it's possible I may have over-engineered a solution to this project, <laughs> so that's why it's still a work in progress and I need time to gather more data. But I, I do think troubleshooting your sourdough starter could go on and on since it can be really challenging to identify what processes you need to adjust to be one step closer to making the perfect sourdough. But now that I have the basic components working, I'm still trying to figure out what to do next. Um, since yeast releases carbon dioxide, I thought about attaching some CO2 sensors and exporting metrics from that as well. And uh, I've already bought the sensor, so now I need to write an exporter for it, and I thought about doing it in a different language for learning purposes. And, but I think I would generally just observe things, change some variables, and take note after I bake. Um, I think it would also be fun to maybe learn about service discovery through this project, because I have a bunch of Raspberry Pis and their IP addresses seem to change periodically. And, um, and then I thought about maybe making a custom bread dashboard and make it available over the internet and make it viewable on my phone. Um, so my goals were initially a little vague in the beginning, but I learned a lot along the way and I have uh, some ideas about how to expand upon it. And I hope that this talk will give whoever have similar goals a head start. Um, so I ended up writing a blog post about my project for Gopher Academy, and then once it was published, someone on Twitter told me about a really cool project by someone called Justin Lamb, and who monitored the fermentation of his sourdough starters with time-lapse photography, computer vision, and image analysis to get its growth characteristics over time, and he was uh, mainly using Python and Scikit. And here's like a quick video of how it works. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I've gotten in touch with him, and we both think it would be a great idea to collaborate and maybe combine our projects together. And I think it could fit really well um, to see how the dough rises in relation to the changes in temperature and humidity. And so some takeaways, I had a lot of fun uh, setting up everything and I found that combining two seemingly very unrelated things is a great and fun way to learn more about both. And using open source software is awesome as always. It allowed me to set everything up really inexpensively and uh, taught me a lot. And there are still a ton about bread making and systems monitoring for me to discover. So here are some links to resources. Thank you. Mm -hmm.